So today I'm doing a little bit of a different uh, message. Normally I read Ken Copeland, but today I'm actually reading, um, what do they call this again? Our Daily Bread. So today's message is called The Wisdom We Need. Fear the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. Proverbs 1 verse 7. Ellen opened her mailbox and discovered a bulky envelope with her friend's return address. Just a few days prior, she shared a relational struggle with, with that friend. Curious, she unwrapped the package and found a colorful beaded necklace on just a simple jute string. Attached was a card with the company slogan, Say it in Morse code. And words translating the necklace hidden and wise message, Seek God's way. Ellen smiled as she fastened it around her neck. The book of Proverbs is a compilation of wise sayings. Many penned by Solomon, who was acclaimed as the wisest man of his era, 1 King 10.23. Its 31 chapters call the reader to listen to wisdom and avoid folly. Starting with the core message of Proverbs 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Do you want to be knowledgeable? Start fearing the Lord. <clears throat> wisdom, knowing what to do, when comes when comes from honoring God by seeking his ways, not your own. In the introductory verses, we read, Listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. What you learn from them will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. And that's verses 8 to 9 in the NLT. Ellen's friend had directed her to the source of wisdom she needed, seek God's way. Her gift focused Ellen's attention on where to discover the help she needed. When we honor God and seek his ways, we'll receive the wisdom we need for all that matters, um, all that matters we face in life, each and every one. Scripture reading today is Proverbs 1, 1 to 9. Wisdom for young people. <clears throat> These are Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their pupil, their, their purpose, sorry, is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them do what is right, just, and fair. Um, I don't know the reality of all these stats. Like, a lot of times you'll hear stats about all kinds of stuff. Anyways, those in religion, right, because religion requires a lot of rules to live, live longer lives. And, uh... I haven't done any follow-up study on that. I mean, according to the scripture, that's true. <laughs> so, that might be a benefit to having a little bit of restraint and control around your lives. I know that people get sick and tired of, of Christianity. Well, the world sure is, because it's a lot of rules, right? A lot of things you, you can and cannot do, right? But a certain level of restraint and self-discipline actually gives you a long, healthy life. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives to help them do what is right, just, and fair. Um, fair. I feel like there's a mistranslation here because uh, in the Bible it says that, that um, uh, oh, some people quote God as being fair, but the scripture actually says that he is just and makes straight the path. He is, he is just and straight, not, not fair. Because not everything's equal here on this earth. Just look around you. Is everything equal? You know, if you're living in North America, you got a roof above your head, look at this, there's a roof above my head. Do most people have that on the earth? You know, I, I went to go visit people in garbage bag homes in Mexico, in Cancun, right? I've met people that live on the street night after night in the pouring rain. Um, life does not seem very fair. I've seen people with afflictions, right? I've seen people that, that live as if they're vegetables. I've seen people who sit in front of the TV for their entire lives. <laughs> Life is not, not fair. These proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. Let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. Let those whose understanding receive guidance. By exploring the meaning in these proverbs and parables, the words of the wise and their riddles. Fear the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. My child, verse 8, when your father corrects you, don't neglect your mother's instruction. 
What will you learn? What you learn from them will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. That's Proverbs 1 to 9. So I'm going to read the commentation here. What the book of Psalms is to prayer and devotional life, the book of Proverbs is to everyday life. Proverbs gives practical suggestions for effective living. This book is not just a collection of interesting tidbits. It contains a deep spiritual insight drawn from experience. A proverb is a short, wise, easy to remember saying that calls a person to, to action. When we read the Bible, do you think we're just supposed to read it? No, we're supposed to read it and then have action. It does argue about basic spiritual and moral beliefs. It assumes we already hold them. The book of Proverbs focuses on God, his character, his works, and blessings. And it tells how we can live in a close relationship to him. Solomon, the third king of Israel, son of the great King David, um, reigned during Israel's golden age. When God said he would give him whatever he wanted, he asked for an understanding mind. 1 Kings 3, 5-14. Here's another thing about fairness <laughs> and why it doesn't exist. Um, you know, D David is David is wonderful. He is revered as being amazing. But anyways, um, the big majority of that blessing doesn't go to David. It goes to his descendants. And that's how that's kind of how God works. You know, if if you live a, a holy, right, up straight life, your children will be blessed and greater and greater. The blessing is down the generational line. And so greater blessing, in some way, came to Solomon um, after David's passing. And Solomon got to build the temple, uh, a praise and worship to God. It wasn't David. <clears throat> when God said he would give him whatever he wanted, he asked for understanding mind. 1 Kings 3, 5, 14. God, we, we all ask for an understanding mind right now as we are watching um, and reading this, Father, um, in your word. The scripture says we have not received because we have not asked. So, God, we are asking for an understanding mind before God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the name uh, and blood of Yeshua Christos with the power of the Holy Spirit. God was pleased with this request. He's not only made Solomon wise, but also gave him great riches and power um, and an era of peace. Solomon built glorious temple in Jerusalem, 1 first, first Kings 6. 1 Kings 6. And wrote most of the book of Proverbs. His profile is found in 1 Kings 3. Riddles were thought-provoking questions. One of the most annoying types of people is a know-it-all. Sounds like me. I haven't called that before. I want to act like that. <clears throat> a person who has a dogmatic opinion about everything. Yep. <laughs> this is kind of like... Kind of poking at me. <clears throat> As close to anything new. Resents discipline. I actually, I, I like my discipline. I very much did resent it as a kid. I used to put a towel underneath my pants for when my dad would spank me. I was like, go for it, father. Go for it. And he'd be whacking a towel. It's close to anything new. Resents discipline and refuses to learn. I want to learn and I want to receive the discipline of the Heavenly Father. <laughs> it is better than... Than receiving the discipline at the end. <clears throat> it's much worse. Solomon call, calls this kind of person a fool. Don't be a know-it-all. God, I, I reject all know-it-allism in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I am not the... I am not tell us, Yeshua. You are tell us. You are true. Instead, be open to the advice of others. Especially those who know you well. And can be valuable insight and counsel. Learn how to learn from others. Remember, only God knows it all. So if you really want to seek truth, tell us, seek God. God will share tell us with you. God, we, we also ask right now that tell us be shared. Um, the truth of Yeshua be shared with all who are listening, watching, and hearing this now in the name of Jesus Christ. Before God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, by the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. <sighs> in this age of information, knowledge is plentiful, but wisdom is scarce. Wisdom means far more than simply knowing a lot. It's, it is a basic attitude that affects every aspect of life. The foundation of knowledge is to fear the Lord, to honor and respect God, to live in awe of his power and obey his word. Faith in God should be controlling principle for your understanding of the word, your attitudes and your actions. Trust in God. He will make you truly wise. Our actions speak louder than words. This is especially true in the home. 
Children learn values, morals, and priorities by observing how their parents act and react every day. If parents exhibit a deep reverence for and dependence on God, the children will catch these attitudes. Let them see your reverence for God. Teach them the right way, uh, right living by giving worship an important place in your family, life, and reading the Bible together. So this morning, I was, I was listening and watching uh, the Alpha and Omega, Omega productions. They use the, the A and the Omega sign. Um, on YouTube, and it was Derek Prince speaking about salt and light. I love Derek Prince. I love his ministry. Um, he's he's a he's definitely uh, filled with the Ramos of the Holy Spirit, and I'm constantly ser- ser- searching for Ramos when I'm reading the Word. I kind of get this is just me. I kind of get disappointed when I show up in a church and there's no Ramos there. I always want the new thing of God. I always want the new thing. I'm, I am happy for the old thing. Jesus died for my sins on the cross. That's an old thing. That's like the first thing that you hear, right, when you become a Christian. So don't get me wrong. I'm grateful for the old thing, but I constantly want the, the Ramos, the revelation, the new thing of God. I want God to be doing something fresh. I don't want stagnant water inside of me. I don't want there to be flies and maggots and stuff growing all over. I want this fresh running water um, that's pure, that's life-giving. I want trees all around and birds and animals to be able to drink from, not stagnant water, but uh, great water. And so the teaching this morning was about salt and light. And I'll give you a, a, a few tidbits of what I was learning, because there's Ramos there, which is, pastors normally teach about the salt as being seasoning. Seasoning on food, preservative, sure. I mean, I won't disagree with that. But salt of the earth is salt of the soil, and that salt was used to disinfect um, the soil because a lot of people would poop in their yards. And that's just just an old way of doing it. In the medieval ages and stuff like that, they'd dump it into the streets, right? And uh, in Israel, they would usually poop at the lowest, deepest end of their property, not to contaminate, not to create illness. And they would use that salt <coughs> to disinfect the, the ground. <coughs> a lot of salt. The idea is that, that we as Christians, uh, we shouldn't e- exempt ourselves from, um, and this, this I already know already, we shouldn't exempt ourselves from being in, in a sinful world, in amongst sinful people, because that's dirt. Sin is dirt. All right? But we are, we are called to be salt of the light. And what a lot of Christians do is they go and hide in Christian communities away from all the people who need the salt and the light, right? And that's what we're called to do. And when, when Jesus was writing down in the sand, you know, it doesn't say what he was writing because what he was writing isn't the important fact, right? Otherwise, it would be written what he wrote in the sand, um, the important fact was that he was writing in the sand when he, when he said, he without sin cast the first stone, okay? When he was writing in the sand, he was showing symbolism to the Jews that God wrote the law in, into the earth, in the tablet of the earth. And he was saying, I am God who wrote the law. And then after he said, he who has, uh, who has not committed adultery, um, cast the first stone, and one by one, they all realized that they themselves had committed adultery against God. And then Jesus said to her, um, don't do it again, because I may not be around to protect you the next time. So mercy and grace comes from God, but it, it isn't endless. We can't just get into trouble uh, be saved again and keep keep seeking after trouble. Eventually, trouble can catch up to you, and it can it can it can put you to death if you if you covenant yourself to that. God wants our covenants to be broken uh, with darkness and connected to light. And so that's that's my prayer for you this morning. I pray God that all covenants of darkness be broken, Father, um, over myself and and over anyone else, and that. Uh, new covenants and existing covenants be strengthened to light to the heavenly father i pray god that you do a renewing work inside of us solomon doesn't doesn't have a a a very good end he's he's filled with demons later (laughs) oh my goodness 
What a, what a way to live, you know? I Even I, Lord, have prayed for the wisdom of Solomon in my life. And I, I do. I want the wisdom. The wisdom's good. <laughs> I just, my heart broke when, when I got to know the true story of the finishing of Solomon and that he was filled with demons and had a bitter end <clears throat> and, and was replaced. Um, yeah. Anyways, God, we want your light and not the darkness. Help us to to walk in a way that's straight and upright. We receive all your discipline, God. Um, if you need to spank us over your knee, go ahead and do it. Like, it's better that than, than what's to come at the end when the wheat is, is separated from the chaff and the chaff is burnt in a furnace for all of eternity. <laughs> the thing that we realize, God, is that if there's a... For there to be a God of the universe, <coughs> first of all, he can prove himself. So I don't need to prove you, God, to anybody else. All they need to do is basically go, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, reveal the tell us truth of Yeshua and the Holy Spirit and yourself, um, because you're God, um, and, and we test you in good. We don't test you in, in evil. So that we can make a, a decision on all truth. We can see you face to face and go, I choose to follow you or I don't, but I, at least I know that you're real. So I ask for that for anybody watching and listening and even people who aren't God. I just speak that over the land, around us, friends, family, um, all the people that we will ever meet God. <coughs> and the ones we, we won't. <coughs> you called us to be salt and light in this world, God. And to lose your saltiness means to be just covered in dirt. Because salt can never lose its saltiness. But you can sure... Uh, overwhelm the salts in in a soup so if you made a, a soup too salty make a ton more soup pour it in there and it will be less salty or pour water in there whatever and that's that's what happens overwhelmed in a world of uh, darkness uh, self-indulgence of desire um, and eventually we succumb to that and we lose reputation but I want to give hope to anyone who's lost reputation that that does not give means to give up. Because nowhere in the scripture does it say to give up. But respect is given and, and trust is earned. And so we will continue to move in a, in, a, in a direction of trust. Doing what is righteous and what is holy for the rest of our lives. No matter the failures that we've caused. Moses and Paul are murderers. And yet they do a redemptive uh, act by following truth and tell us and living by love for the rest of their ministry that you've given them. I pray that we would all do the same. Thank you, God, for, for the light, the air, the salts, all the good things that you've created in this life that, that make life pleasurable. I pray, God, that, that as Derek Prince was teaching about that 5%, God, whatever that percentage is that's needed to change the environment, because we're, we're meant to be a city of light and, and not to be uh, to go it alone, because man was not made to be alone. <laughs> First of all, we're meant to be unified in the marriage of the bride of, of Christ, the church, with uh, God himself, with the unity of God, tr true unification. So help us to live in that place consistently. And just existing where we are, God, just being salt and just being light to change the atmosphere. Not, not thinking that we have to do a thousand things. We just need to be the salt that we're called and we need to be light. Because light is present and it affects the entire atmosphere. Salt is present in the, in the food, in the soil, and it affects the growth of that soil for uh, plants and all kinds of other things. And we want a beautiful garden, God. Too much salt again in that image, God, in that garden will kill the plants. It'll disinfect the soil. So we as Christians shouldn't live in just one big city, not, not dispersing throughout the dirt to grow uh, a beautiful harvest, God. So we call forth that beautiful harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. We call forth the blood of Jesus over our circumstance and situation. We call for all the keys, God, that you have. So for breakthroughs in every uh, dire circumstance that any person might seem like they're stuck in. And that we realize, that we get to a point as Christians, that we realize that when those, those barricades come, 
it's actually a good sign of the working of God. Because how is there to be a breakthrough if there isn't a wall uh, to show up in the first place? And knowing that you are the key to the kingdom and that you will break that wall down, you will open doors. And you will close doors too to the enemy, but you will open the doors for us to, to walk right through. So help us to walk in that level of faith, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, I love you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I'm so glad to be here in Jerusalem. I mean, that in itself is a breakthrough. That, that was something that, that uh, was prayed through, and God broke that through. And I'm here by faith. And I will see what God does in me and what he does around others. But again, I'm going to just be light and salt. I'm just going just gonna to be there and let God do what he wants to do. And not so much about what Gideon wants to do. All right. I love you, brothers and sisters. Have a great and wonderful day in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.